definitely tell the difference here between these shells. Take a look at her shell. She looks like a rock. And wait until you see her face. And she's like, no, like that's what he lives in. I'm like, he lives in a Tupperware with this much water? With Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to be introducing you to some of our special needs turtles and tortoises. If you're new here, I'm Gabby. My boyfriend Chris is filming and we run an animal rescue together. We're actually in the process of building an animal sanctuary. And over the last couple years, we've really just got a lot of really unique animals surrendered to us. So we're going to show you some of them. Before we bring the turtles out, I wanted to show you this turtle shell just to help you understand turtle anatomy a little better. So some people think that turtles are like hermit crabs where they just are not attached to their shell and as they grow, they need to find a bigger shell. And as you can see here, that is not the case. This is a snapping turtle shell. This snapping turtle died of natural causes. Um, there's actually some holes in here, probably from an alligator, which is not the reason it died because you can see the spine is perfectly intact. But you can see here all the ribs, the spine over here. So a lot of these animals that you're gonna see have pretty significant deformities in their shell from improper care, diet related, humidity related sometimes. And it's actually really sad, but they're very special to us and they each have a unique story and we just do the best we can to try to educate people on how to prevent things like this and why this can really damage a tortoise. So to start out, I'm gonna show you a normal, healthy looking tortoise. This is one of our red foot tortoises. His name is Tortellini. If you take a look at his shell, it's pretty much perfect. He doesn't have any pyramiding. It's nice and smooth. Sometimes the males um, do get this little like peanut shape, so that's normal. But when I show you the other tortoises, it's going to be very obvious as to what is uh, wrong with them. So in this beautiful temporary enclosure, We have Theodore. I'm actually going to take him into the shade because it is very hot today. So Theodore is a sulcata tortoise. This is actually the third largest tortoise species in the entire world, which is kind of hard to believe when you see an animal in this condition. Take a look at his shell. So that's, uh, I don't even know what to call that. This is beyond pyramiding. This is, this is really bad. So his shell is not only concave, it also is pyramided. And remember, this is his spine. So something like this. I can only assume that this is diet related and I was actually reading a study the other day on um, they took a bunch of sulcata tortoise hatchlings and they gave them different humidity levels and the tortoises with lower humidity started developing some pyramiding but I don't know to be this bad what do you think Chris? I feel like this has to be like diet related too. I'm sure it's both. I'm sure yeah. they both work uh, together and can cause these issues. So we actually don't know anything about Theodore. We were filming a live YouTube video. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys um, were watching it and we actually got the call about him. Somebody found him walking around in West Palm Beach. When we got him, he actually had a prolapse of his male parts and we brought him to the vet and we really did think we were gonna have to amputate that. Um, but about three months later with some you know, proper diet and some fresh sunshine and UV rays, it actually went back in, it retracted, and he hasn't had any more issues. You can also see his face looks just, it looks, what's the best way to explain it? It does not look like a normal tortoise face. He has some metabolic bone disease. We say he kind of has like a goofy looking face. Uh -huh. But we love him, He's we love this tortoise. He's so cute. I mean, we don't know if he's gonna get any bigger. Sometimes uh, improper care like this will stunt them. And like I said, we knew nothing about him. We did want to give the owners uh, the benefit of the doubt. We did post him on social media trying to find the owner, but nobody ever came forward and he's been with us for almost a year now. You wanna go down? These guys are grassland animals, so they eat a lot of grasses. I, that's why I just love this enclosure for him because he's able to just like graze. Um, so we give them like orchard grass, they can have Timothy hay, although he's very, very picky about what he likes. But I think a lot of people just are under the impression that tortoises just all eat the same thing and they're vegetarian. 
Redfoot tortoises are actually omnivorous. And didn't you see a redfoot or was it a yellowfoot that you saw? Uh, yeah, I was in Peru. And so I think it was a yellow foot and the first one I'd ever seen and it was <laughs> eating a possum. It was eating a dead possum. So they absolutely will eat, you know, carry on and things like that. Whereas these guys are um, herbivorous and they just mostly graze. So we're going to take Theodore and I'm going to show you guys the comparison between him and Jumanji, our healthy 19 year old Sulcata tortoise. Hey buddy, come here. Let's see, he'll come over maybe for a piece of lettuce. Actually just got Jumanji last week, um, if, or two weeks ago now. If you missed the other video, check it out. It's the video we posted before this actually <laughs> making his enclosure. He's gonna come over for a little snack. So Jumanji is pretty much perfect. You can see his shell. I mean, it's nice and round. He has a nice dome shape. He has a slight bit of pyramiding, which is not uncommon in captivity, but he's pretty much perfect. And you can really tell the difference here between these shells. Can you come around the back, Chris, and maybe look from on top? You can really see the differences in the face and the bone structure too. So this is what a healthy tortoise looks like. Big, beautiful round face. And then that's what Theodore looks like. Who is that? Honestly, for all we know, this tortoise might be older than this tortoise. And it, he might just be stunted from improper care. I mean, you really don't know. It's just, it's crazy to think about. We've seen alligators improperly cared for that are 50 years old and they're only four feet. So it's unfortunate, but we're really happy that we could give him a great home. And I know a lot of people are going to ask if this is permanent or if this will correct itself. This is something that he's going to deal with the rest of his life. It's possible if he grows, maybe the new shell like the, the shell as he grows will kind of like even out, but this is always going to be here on top. So as a rescue, it's really important that we don't shame people because we don't want people to be afraid of surrendering animals to us. But at the same time, ignorance only goes so far. So in an animal like this, honestly, this is the worst case I've ever seen. I mean, look how skinny this animal is, first of all. So this is Jasmine. We've had her for a year now. She was found walking around outside and she was brought to a wildlife center um, who kind of rehabbed her, got her in slightly better shape. And then we adopted her and um, you know agreed to take care of her the rest of her life. So look at that split in her shell. Look, just the, I don't even know how to explain this. Does it look worse in person? Like, can you can you tell in ca on camera how significant this is? I think if you understand the fact that this is supposed to be a smooth dome. Beautiful dome. Isn't this one of the, is this the second largest tortoise species in Africa? I think the sulcata is the first. I think the leopard tortoise is the second. I'm, I'm pretty positive. I'll double check and I'll put it in like a caption. It's either the second or third. These guys get huge. And unfortunately in captivity, I almost never see healthy ones, but this is definitely, this is really bad. So when we got her, um, she could honestly barely walk. The back of her legs would chafe against her shell. She's a lot better now, but you can still see if she walks. It's, it's not great. It's not great, guys. I just, I feel like you really have to work hard to mess an animal up this badly. Like, at what point do you take it upon yourself when you see that the shell is starting to concave or that it's having trouble walking? Like, at what point do you just do a little research? So, again, I'm going to say that this is most likely due to improper diet. Um, these are grassland animals again, so grazers are not really supposed to have fruit or anything like that. But we love her and you know, like she is definitely doing better and it's just really awesome that she gets to live outside, have, you know, <laughs> Bam. Close Bam just it. ran him over. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So we're going to 
put Jasmine back and then we're gonna move on to our slider waffles who has a very sad story. So this is our yellow belly slider waffles. You can see where he gets his name. He has a very sad story. We probably got him about almost a year ago. I feel like we kind of got a lot of like the very special needs tortoises in a very uh, short time frame, like all at once. So I actually uh, had someone text me and they said that they were babysitting this turtle for um, their neighbor and she noticed that like his shell looked a little weird and wanted to know if there was anything she could do. So I'm like, okay, like send me a picture, you know, and then she sent me this and I'm like, huh, that looks like pretty bad. Like what is it being kept in? So she sent me a picture of this turtle in like a Tupperware, like this big with this much water. And I'm like, is that just like what they gave you to watch him for the week? And she's like, no, like that's what he lives in. I'm like he lives in a Tupperware with this much water with no UV and no filter, like no basking platform. She's like, yeah. I was flabbergasted. So like in the nicest way possible, I told her that that is 100% animal abuse and she had to do whatever she could to, to make them surrender that animal to either her or somebody else. And we deal with this a lot where, you know, neighbors or babysit pet sitters are watching the animal and then they reach out to us like, this animal isn't being taken care of, this bird is locked in the cage for 23 hours a day or even 24 hours a day, hasn't been out of the cage in 17 years, I don't know how to go about this. And it's always such like a, a hard thing, you know, to kind of tell your neighbor or your friend like, hey, I think it would be best for this animal to go to like a sanctuary, I, I mean, it's something we deal with a lot. It's a hard situation and I don't always know what advice to give people. I, I, I mean, if that were me, I would be uncomfortable telling somebody like, hey, you're not taking the best care of this animal. Maybe it should go here. But as a rescuer, like it is our job to rescue animals and to prioritize animals' health over people's feelings. And it's not always easy. So luckily when the neighbor came back, she's like, hey, I have some concerns. And they're like, oh, we don't want him anyway. We were getting ready to release him into the wild, which is literally the worst thing you could do, especially because this turtle did not know how to swim. And when we put him in his new 700 gallon uh, outdoor tub, like we thought he was gonna drown. He could not figure out how to swim. Luckily he figured it out um, in a couple days, but just like for a turtle to not know how to swim, like it's horrible. So they ended up getting him like 10 years ago. I think they got him from like Chinatown or, or something where they sell very, very small turtles. And they put him in the Tupperware and they literally wrote with Sharpie, like the water line. So like that much. And then they just let him grow up in that with no filter, no heat and this much water for 10 years and didn't think to do any research or anything. And super sad situation but like we are very happy for him that we have him now and very soon we're going to be making a beautiful turtle pond for all of our aquatic turtles so this is the enclosure that we made for our two box turtles um I, i'll just show you guys <laughs> so this is time just take a look at her shell she looks like a rock and wait until you see her face uh, she was collected by somebody's grandmother out of the wild in 1946. So this turtle is over 80 years old. Now, unfortunately, uh, they were mostly feeding her bananas and cat food. And I think that is probably why she looks like this. That doesn't even look like a box turtle. I'm going to put in one of Chris's pictures that he took of like a wild box turtle where you could really see the difference. She just looks like a rock. Now box turtles get the name box turtles because they have two hinges here where they can actually close up into their shell. As you can see, she is unable to do that because her shell is so um, deformed. She also has like one funky nostril. It's kind of weird. And she has like really long straggling nails that we, we have to cut down. But yeah, I mean, it's just crazy that these animals can survive just like these horrible conditions and totally wrong diet. It, it pretty, it is pretty amazing. And I mean, she's still doing pretty well. We actually got a second box turtle about two weeks ago. Same story. I think he's probably under this fern. This is like his favorite place to hide. Oh, and actually he's right here. So he is in a little better shape, but still pyramiding here. 
I've never seen pyramiding on a box turtle before. He was found 10 years ago. What did they tell you if he was found as a hatchling? No. So we don't know if he's he was a hatchling or an adult. I would assume he's smaller if he had if he got um developed all this pyramiding. So but let's see if you can uh we can show you guys his legs. So very long beak which we cut down. He also cannot go into his shell. And his legs, it, it looks, I don't know if his legs are long or if his shell is just so tiny that his legs look huge. He'll start walking in a second and we'll show you guys. He has like frog legs. <laughs> they really are like frog legs. But I do think that is because like his shell is stunted. I feel like his shell just did not grow with the rest of his body. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's video and learned something and we're just going to hit really hard again. It is so important when you get any animal to do your research, but especially for an animal like a turtle or a tortoise that can live so long, all of these animals are likely going to have health issues for, you know, the remainder of their life. So please never take an animal out of the wild in the case of our box turtles. And then when you're buying a hatchling, make sure you do proper care. Make sure you know what species you have. We can't tell you how many people try to surrender turtles to us and they don't even know what species they have. So please, please, please just do your research. And thank you guys for the support. Thank you for watching. Let us know what you think of the turtles. I know that's a lot of information and sometimes the stories are really sad, but we try to keep it fun and like lighthearted. And we're just gonna give these animals the best life we can.